about Rivers? Got another request this week. Uh, can't remember who requested it. It was a discussion on Twitter and it cropped up. And I thought, oh yeah, I should review that. And some other folk chimed in and went, oh yeah, yeah, that'd be good, that'd be good. So, yeah, if it were you, let me know. Can't remember who did request it. It was a while back now. So yeah, time for another testosterone fueled action flick. The Rock. Providing, of course, that the copyright box don't block the footage. Bugger off, bugger off. Yes, action extravaganza, The Rock, starring Sean Connery and Nicolas Cage. Now, the film kicks off with these soldiers breaking into a military facility and nicking some rockets with some horrible chemical weapons. But they don't look that horrible. They look quite nice, don't they? They look like Christmas decorations, you know, baubles and that. But we do get an early example of how horrible and dangerous these baubles are. And how flimsy they are. It just cracks immediately on contact with anything that. That's very flimsy. And you can see how horrible it is because it melts this bloke's face. Ooh. Yeah, look at that. Looks like the worst pizza topping imaginable, that, doesn't it? Anyway, these soldiers, along with their freshly stolen chemical weapons, pop along to Alcatraz. I mean, why wouldn't you? And they take a load of tourists hostage and then try to owe the government to ransom. It turns out the baddies are doing it for compensation for bereaved war families. You will transfer $100 million from the Grand Cayman Red Sea Trading Company account to an account I designate. From these funds, reparations of $1 million will be paid to each of the 83 Marines' families. The rest of the funds I will disperse at my discretion. Do I make myself clear? And basically, they say, if you don't give us this money, we're going to subject San Francisco to annihilation at the hands of hideous chemical weapon. Now, FBI Director Womack, not a member of Womack and Womack, uh, he recruits chemical weapon specialist Stanley Goodspeed, played by Nicholas Cage. And when he's not dicking about in the office with his workmates, he's diffusing booby trap devices. And in this very tense scene, you're thinking, oh, is he going to defuse this bomb? Or is he going to blow up and kill all of the FBI staff inside the building? Well, given it's the first 20 minutes of the film, probably not the latter. Now, Goodspeed is there to provide the FBI with inside info on this chemical weapons threat. But they also need some inside info on Alcatraz in order to work out the layout of the place so that their crack Navy SEALs team can get in there, kill the baddies and neutralise the threat. But they can't get hold of anybody who knows anything about Alcatraz because they're all dead or senile or some such. So the only bloke with any inside info on the place is disgraced former British agent John Mason, played by Sean Connery. Now, John Mason is a bit of a James Bond character, really, albeit uh, an elderly version. Because, yeah, he was in the, the British Secret Service, but got imprisoned for nicking a load of official secrets. So he's been locked up for the past 30 years, despite escaping many times, including from Alcatraz. And because he were able to find a sneaky way out of Alcatraz, he's the only bloke with the inside info to help him find a sneaky way in. Now, evidently, there weren't a barber at his prison because he's come out looking like blooming Gandalf or something like that. And before he even agrees to help the FBI, he insists on getting a hotel suite for a wash and brush up and a nickel haircut. Have you gone to San Francisco? Crikey, what's happened to Connery's singing voice there? If you're going to San Francisco, it just sounds like a, a rambling drunk. He used to have a lovely singing voice, didn't he? Right back when he were in Darby O'Gill and the Ickle People. My darling Irish girl. And Doctor No. Underneath the mango tree, my honey and me. And the man who would be king. A glorious band, the chosen few on whom the spirit came. Oh no, this is the, the really traumatic bit, ain't it? The yeah, Michael Caine starts singing. But Mason ain't daft. He's able to distract the guards to buy him time to throw FBI Director Womack, uh, not from Womack and Womack, uh, off the roof 
in order to create a diversion so that it can escape again. And this provides the excuse for a dramatic car chase around San Francisco. A bit like in Bullet, but not as good. And after he's had a quick chin wag with his daughter, good speed rounds him up because they need him to help with the more pressing matter of dealing with the risk of annihilation at the hands of hideous chemical weapons. Well, gee whiz, John, I guess we ought to get going, huh? Now, initially, the FBI just want Mason as a consultant, but he says, oh, no, no, I can't remember everything. It's all in my head. I'll know when I'm there. Even this perfect scale model of Alcatraz doesn't help jog his memory. It's good to see the FBI has got a budget for making scale models of hostage locations. You'd think they'd have more important things to spend the money on. Unless, of course, Janine from accounts made it off her own bat, maybe. Anyway, they reluctantly agree to let Mason go in with the Navy SEAL team. Now, at good speed, he was the other way round. He were hoping he was just going to be a consultant. But they tell him, no, 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 you're going in. And he, he doesn't respond positively to the news. God dear me, look at the state of them sinks. They're bloody disgraceful. That's a government building, that. There's probably all sorts of germs in them. Instead of blowing your budget on scale models of Alcatraz, you should pay a cleaner some decent wages and get them sorted. Get some jizz cream cleaner on that. Bloody awful. Anyway, the elite Navy SEALs team, with Goodspeed and Mason tagging along, attempt to break into Alcatraz undetected so they can kill the baddies and neutralise the threat of annihilation at the hands of hideous chemical weapons. But the baddies ain't stupid. And despite all their posturing, the Navy SEALs find the sense walking into a trap in this very dramatic scene that involves a lot of shouting. You walk into the wrong goddamn room, Commander! Commander God damn it, Commander, one last time. You tell your men to safety their weapons, drop them on the deck. I cannot give that order! I am not gonna repeat that order! I will not give that order! Give that order! I won't give the bloody order! Go on, give the order, you bleeder! Shove your order up your ass! What the hell is wrong with you, man? Stand fast! And then we're treated to a sequence of slow motion massacre as the Navy SEAL team are wiped out after being on Alcatraz for all the five minutes. So that's that, mission over. <laughs> of course it ain't, of course it ain't, because Goodspeed and Mason are still knocking about, ain't they? Yeah, who needs a crack Navy SEAL team when you've got a chemist and a pensioner? So Goodspeed and Mason set off to find the rockets and neutralise the threat of annihilation at the hands of hideous chemical weapons. Yeah, there's a great relationship, great rapport between these two. Because Mason initially is very dismissive of good speed, thinks he's a pellet. After you, Ace. But you can see when it comes to diffusing these chemical weapons, good speed's in his element, and Mason obviously starts to respect him. You know, you've got to listen to this bloke, he knows what he's talking about. And do not move that. Yes, don't move them. Don't don't move them because they're so fragile. They'll crack just in just if they touch anything. They do look like Christmas decorations though, don't they? I tell you what, when you're doing the decorating this year, have fun with it. Add an element of tension by pretending you're defusing some hideous chemical weapons. Hmm. Now, Conrad, as you'd expect, is great in this. Great to see him doing the action again, and it, it comes out with some great one-liners. Like what? Kill him again? But for some reason, the scriptwriters have decided he should swear quite a lot. Walmart. Not Womack and Womack. Why am I not surprised, you piece of shit? Yeah, it's perfectly okay, you f***ing idiot. Winners go home and f*** the prom queen. Personally, I think you're a f***ing idiot. And I don't think he should be swearing that much. It sounds like he's trying to swear for effect. And Connor doesn't need to swear. He's got the gravitas to get his message across without using blue language. Don't get me wrong, I love Effin and Jeffin as much as the next bloke, but uh, I think it devalues what Connor is saying by making him swear. Now, Cage, very entertaining. We've spoken about Cage before, and the way he delivers some of these lines, they're ludicrous, really. I just said I want to find some rockets. What do you say we cut the chit chat a hole? How, in the name of Zeus's butthole, did you get out of your cell? No normal person would say him the way he says it, but very entertaining. Although it does deliver perhaps the most stilted one-liner in action movie history. Do you like the Elton John song Rocket Man? I don't like soft ass shit. Oh, you don't. Well, I only bring it up because uh, it's you. You're the Rocket Man. 
contrived it would be an understatement, wouldn't it? I mean, it's that contrived. You could probably pick any Elton John song. Uh, what else did he done? Uh, Sacrifice. Yeah, you could say, oh, do you like the Elton John song Sacrifice? Because that's you. You're the sacrifice. See? Easy, isn't it? But it ain't just Connor and Cage who are good in this. There's loads of good supporting actors in it and all. Loads of familiar faces, what you recognise from other stuff. Like uh, that bloke. Uh, and him. Uh, and them fellas. If I had time, I'd do a what have they been in. But, uh, you know, I'm already ten minutes into this review. But because the actors are so good, the baddies, they ain't just black and white baddies. The shades of grey in there. Ed Harris, who plays the general, he's doing this horrible thing, but he's trying to do it for honourable reasons. We bluffed, they called it, the mission's over. And by the end you see he realises how misguided he was. But some of the other baddies are just horrible. This fella, you can't wait till he gets his comeuppance, he's horrible this bloke. Oh crikey, good speed, yeah look after them baubles, you don't want them to get, get it, because they're so fragile they'll break on contact with anything. Oh you gotta get that one, don't let that break. Oh, thank heavens for that. Now, you've got to keep that safe, because any impact on that whatsoever, it's going to break. We know that. I think that might have broken it there. I mean, that would have probably broken it there. I mean, it definitely broke in there. And there, definitely broken there. Must have broken there, definitely broken. Must be broken there. Well, that's convenient, ain't it? He must have one of the super strength baubles there. Just enough to turn that bloke into hideous pizza topping. That would have, weren't it? Okie do, on to raise ratings. Uh, and yeah, what were I expecting out of this one? Well, Connery's in it, uh, a lot of good actors in it, and it's an action film. And even though Connery has done a few duffers in his time, I were hoping it, it should be a, at least a three-star film. And I've got to say, <laughs> thoroughly enjoyed it. Thoroughly enjoyed it. It is stupid, completely ludicrous. Nicholas Cage doing some trademark manic acting. Connery being, well, Connery. Uh, and it ain't Shakespeare, so I left my brain at the door, but I thoroughly enjoyed it. So I'm rating The Rock a four star, three star film. Uh, do you like the Elton John and Kiki D song, Don't Go Breaking My Heart? Because I'm going to. I'm going to literally break your heart into pieces, courtesy of this gigantic rocket that I'm going to fire at you. Uh, do you like the Elton John song, I'm Still Standing? Because you won't be, after I've fired this great big rocket up your ass. Uh, do you like the Elton John song, Crocodile Rock? Uh, no, that, that do not work, does it? Well, I hope you enjoyed my review of The Rock this week, Ravers. And if you did, remember to poke the like button. Give it a good poke. Share, rate reviews with your mates. And subscribe if you ain't already a subscriber. Much appreciate it. And that's going to be my last review for a nickel bit because I'm going on my, my jollies, my holidays, uh, off to Scarborough with my wife Denise. But I will be back in September with some more reviews for you. Copyright bots permitted. So enjoy the rest of your summer and I will see you all soon. Okie doo!